Hi everyone, my name is Rio. I'm a practicing LPN right now in BC and I am currently doing my studies to bridge to registered nursing. I just wanted to share with you my tips on how I did it and possibly give you ideas on how you can do it for yourself too if you're uh, currently an LPN and you're looking to bridge into registered nursing. So I'll just start with a little intro on my journey to um, getting into the bridging program. So I graduated high school in 2013 and right out of high school I went to community college wanting to go into um, registered nursing obviously. Obviously everyone who wants to jump right into registered nursing although we all know it's really hard to jump into registered nursing so I ended up just taking the sciences that I needed for prerequisites obviously because um, although they do require like bio 12, chem 12, etc. Um, you do have to take some post-secondary ones also it does give you an advantage um, once you're in the program because your credits will transfer anyway so yeah I did that and I was also working but I was more so working than going to school so I started just working because I didn't want to go to school anymore and then I thought I could just take a break and make some money um, and be materialistic and then that got me into a hole of just working and then I think it was about two years now I was out of high school and I was getting sick of it and um, me and my coworker were always I was working in retail and it was very slow so sometimes me and my other coworker were talking about our dreams and our goals and I've always wanted to be an RN so I was telling him about that and then I was thinking like oh maybe I should just become an LPN and then bridge over to RN. I had no idea what um, LPN was until getting out of high school like that you could actually bridge it. I knew that LPN was like a low paid nurse kind of thing but um, I just thought like a nurse is a nurse whatever like it's fine. So I went to LPN school and um, I graduated in 2017 and then uh, while I was waiting to take my um, boards I was working still again and traveling as much as I could until I had to start working as an actual nurse. And then um, at the end of 2017 I got a job working on the island. Um, I'm from Metro Vancouver so I worked on Vancouver Island was my first job because there are really underserved communities there. And um, it's also to know, good to note that um, you can get federal tax. There's two types of taxes that you can get um, in order to help your student loans. There's the federal and there's the provincial. The provincial requires you to be public, um, employed under public um, health uh, authority um, with a minimum of three months carrying a line so you can't be casual and then on top of the three months if you work consecutively for a year with like a minimum practicing hours of like 500 or something which you should make if you are doing part-time or full-time um, and then you can also do like overtime hours accounts to that and then you can get up to like 4,000 number changes like every year um, and then the federal I believe is like 2,000 there's two documents um, I can link them down below and then I was like trying to get into nursing school because I was like enough of this like LPN business like it's not fun um, so I tried to get into um, or I tried I did my research I started like looking up every school what requirements do they need what um, what, what are the deadlines what are the fees so I was looking at all of that and I constructed like a little chart and I have a binder about that and I have it on like a Google Doc I'll also link it down below um, but it's good to note that everything changes every year. I recommend that you always call, um, have all of these uh, websites on a specific document so it's easy just to check and like save all your account passwords and stuff for every place because that also gets very annoying if you have to like, keep resetting your password. So I started my bridging process maybe like in 2019 and then it took a while because I was working while taking one or two courses at a time. I was working to pay off my student loans because like the whole idea of being debt free was more important to me than um, my education um, but now I obviously I'm prioritizing my education and then I ended up getting into this program because I took it a lot more seriously I, it's kind of something that I just like revisited every few months it always comes up it's kind of like it's kind of like when 
when you meet family and they're like always like they have goals of like losing weight or whatever and then it's like you can't actually do it unless you have a plan i started to keep looking at my due dates and like what i should do and then eventually had enough courses that all the courses that i needed in order to apply so on the on your like learning planning website i'll have that linked down below i think it's called learning planning um you can apply to all of the schools at once so i just did that and then i applied to schools i didn't even like hear about or like know of at first at this point i was looking at either bridging which is a very slim number of institutions that do actually offer a bridging program and then i was also looking at just starting from year one because at this point like with the options being so slim while you're bridging because in my mind i was thinking okay so we're jumping into year three um, there's no designated cohort for that group it's more so just whoever drops out then you can get a spot so i was thinking like okay so maybe i should just start from year one because like what's the point of me taking all these courses and then you know then i got into this program here and um yeah now i'm in a bridging program i was super excited i was telling everyone like oh i got into a bridging program it's going to be two years i'm so excited and i started like registering all for all my courses and then i was looking at like registering for like um three level right because i would be jumping into third year little did i know i have to take level one courses because in order to be in the level three you have to have the level two but in order to register for that level two that you need for the level three, you have to register for the level one. So it's kind of just like all a big scheme and you have to just start from year one. But um, being an LPN, you do get around like, or I got six courses omitted from um, year one and two. So three from each year. Which is beneficial because you do get a break and you don't have to take intercession courses um and i did meet somebody who was also in his lpn to rn bridging program here and he was in his year two and he literally went to this college it's a public college he went to this college and he did his lpn here and it's still all of his credits still did not transfer to his rn program so that just goes to show that it doesn't matter if you went to public or private um you will always have to start from year one unless you really strategically planned it and you found the course out the the program outline and you registered for all of these courses prior to then you could totally jump into year three um but i just stress the importance of finding the information and emailing people if you don't know um, what the answer to your question is just like regularly take the time out of your day in order to make sure you have you're on top of everything so like schedule a time maybe like after lunch like oh let's spend like two hours on the computer and just make sure that all of my documents are in place all of the dates i have are right like um, if i have any questions about like what course i can take blah 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 like just ask the questions uh, so now I'm here and I'm living um, not in Metro Vancouver anymore, obviously. I've moved out and I've discovered a lot about myself and a lot about living by yourself. So I will always also be making a video about living alone. Well, I don't live alone, I live with roommates, but um, yeah. So um, feel free to comment down below any questions. I will be linking a lot of my resources that I found very helpful down below. Um, I hope this helps somebody out there who is trying to bridge from an LPN to an RN. Um, it's literally all about the time that you put into it. That's what you're going to get from it. So I'm really happy that I'm here, but also there are bouts of sadness that like, why am I this old and I'm still here? But I think that's fine and age is just a number. Some things that I've come to learn are that there's not a lot of uh, seats in Metro Vancouver because obviously there's a higher population and um, seats in nursing schools are only designated because of the hospitals in that area so like say like we have five hospitals in metro vancouver and there's maybe um, 30 seats that they can give per school um, upon each rotation so that's why the numbers are are like not the numbers but the seats of the numbers are so difficult and that's why it takes a long time so i feel like moving is not necessarily a bad thing um you will get your 
seat as a student and then you can like go back home and then work at VGH or something. So I encourage everyone to just really try. Everyone watching this video, if you're an LPN and you're considering doing RN, you should just try it. You're gonna make double the money. I mean, you should just try it. I mean, if you're an LPN, I don't know. I just, that's my opinion. Also becoming an RN will help you to broaden your um, possible applications. Like you can work in many other different fields and your scope of practice won't be restricted. So I think that's a really big benefit. And um, yeah. So if you have any questions, feel free to DM me on like Instagram or comment here and then I can hopefully answer your questions. Um, if not, I'll try to find somebody who can. So yeah, thanks for watching. Okay, bye.